would say it's nice to see you, but it ain't nice to see you. I guess you can see me, but I can't see you, Ty Bill. Uh, Miss Carol had the drainage and sinus drainage and all first of the week, and then she was real sweet to me, and she shared that with me about Thursday. So I just got drainage down the back of my throat and, you know, kind of that type of deal, coughing or whatever, so I didn't want to make sure that you didn't catch anything that uh, that you didn't want to have catch, you know, that type of deal. So we're doing this by video today rather than uh, in person. You know, we're going to try this, see how it works, and hopefully it'll, it'll work, and that'll be another medium which we can we can do if uh, for some reason I need to be out or, you know, that type of deal. So anyway, but, uh, you know, we're going to start on Chapter 5 today, you know, and uh, then continue on our study and just kind of see where it, where we get to, I know we're supposed to do the whole chapter, but we'll never make the whole chapter, so I, I promise you won't make the whole chapter because I'm going to quit by 8 anyway, so not 8 o'clock, but about verse 8, so anyway, but uh, if you would, just turn the Bible's women to, to chapter 5 in Revelation, and we'll we'll get started. <clears throat> Revelation 5 basically, you know, you know, talks about the continuation of what John saw in heaven. Chapter 4, we saw John uh, seeing the throne room and, and God the Father and also just a little bit of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 5, we're going to see, pick up where we're going to see, he's going to see Jesus, the Son, and also the Holy Spirit also. But uh, these are the things that's happening in, in heaven prior to chapter 6 and the, and the tribulation actually beginning uh, here on earth. Uh, so we get two chapters here, and then we'll pick up uh, back and forth, we'll go to earth on chapter 6, and then we'll kind of transition back and forth that once in a while throughout the rest of the book and all, okay? Uh, chapter 5 says, so talk is, I guess uh, the title of which is Scroll and the Lamb. It's talking about the scroll that uh, that that Jesus takes from God to be the title deed of, of heaven, you know, type deal on earth and his, his rule and reign in the second coming. Chapter 5, verse 1 says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides, and seal with seven seals. So here he's talking about the uh, scroll that he saw in, you know, sitting in the right hand of God the Father. Because God the Father is one that's holding this scroll. Now the scroll is uh, really in for the Greek and all. It uh, talks about it would be a book. But uh, you know that basically it is by Jewish words or Jewish interpretation all is a scroll. This scroll is usually a, ra a r round thing which is wrapped up or rolled up and then sealed. It is rolled up together and sealed with the seven seals. This scroll here is uh, symbolic of you know of the the scrolls that they have you know passing on many of the different writings in the Old Testament you know that type of deal. Uh, <clears throat> it, the scroll is made up of pat patmos uh, reeds and fibers that type of deal. It is made usually the fibers run horizontally on the front of the scroll and then vertically on the back of the scroll. They, you, they write on the front of the scroll because it's written horizontally, so it's much easier to write on than the back is. But we know that it is written on both sides of the scroll, so God doesn't have any problem writing on the bad side or the good side. We also have seen that where God is actually writing on the front and the back of, of, the, of the ten stones, of the stones in the Ten Commandments and all. So uh, same, same thing as far as uh, what God is doing. He has got this scroll... And it is a title deed, if you will. It's a, it, by the interpretation by the Jews. Title deed to earth itself. We know that uh, God is the creator and Jesus is going to act as judge and ruler over the earth during a thousand year reign of the millennium kingdom. You know, type deal. But God is going to give to Jesus the title deed to the earth so that he has the right and rule and the power to reign on the earth during the, during the thousand year reign. It is sealed by seven seals by Roman law. Any title deed that is written type deed had to be sealed by seven seals. Uh, that just ensured that the the authenticity of that of that scroll and also uh, that it would be secure in in until the time it was open. We know from uh, Daniel's study that Daniel was writing these things down and all this kind of stuff, and he got to the point where God told Daniel says, "Don't write these down, or do not you know open the scroll so nobody could see." So he, he sealed up the writing of Daniel's time until the time come near. And now he is here. He is opening the scroll. He is, well, right, it is now time in history where the scroll will be opened and, and tribulation will begin. Okay. Uh, verse 2 says, And I saw a mighty angel proclaimed in a loud voice, who is worthy to break, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? <clears throat> Here he's talking about, said he saw a mighty, mighty angel. A mighty angel could be 
most anything is uh, many times in, in Revelation the mighty angel is used to pronounce or proclaim certain things that, that happened in, in heaven and happened also on earth. But here he said uh, it's proclaimed in a loud voice. And in Revelation there's 20 times in the book of Revelation where he said use the things of a loud voice. So this is one of the first loud voice stayings or loud voice proclamation made in, made in Revelation. It says who is worthy to open the scroll or worthy to open this. Now this is more of a rhetoric I guess a question in that you know he is saying these things and you know and 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 John knows that you know he doesn't know exactly what is going on this type of deal but we know that Jesus is is capable Jesus, Jesus is the one that's going to open all these things has the power to do that but basically it's the a question of saying and showing that there's nobody except Jesus that it has the power or has the, has the right to open the scroll, which, which is the title deed of God. <clears throat> In verse 3, it says, uh, uh, verse 3 says, But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside. <clears throat> Here he said, you know, right, right there's a rhetoric question of who could open the scroll. He says no one, no one in uh, in heaven itself can open it, which means basically the angels cannot open it. The redeemed saints that are sitting around the throne, the elders could not open, open the scroll. Also, those on the earth, and those on earth are the redeemed, the ones that, you know, that Christ has saved on earth, and we're ch Christ's children, but we have no right to, to open the scroll either. And then it says are under the earth. And are under the earth basically talks about all those lost people that are waiting and waiting for judgment and white throne judgment, and also that even Satan is as being under the earth, he can't open it either because he does not have the power to do that either. Shows the power that Jesus has over everything, all creation, and all, everything that that is made, and even those things that are not made. It says uh, now, uh, basically here it says it, it's worthy. Who's the one that is worthy? And nobody he sees is worthy in through the verse three. But that leads to verse 4. Verse 4 said, And I wept and wept, because no one was loud, no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Here we see, since no one is able to open the scroll that we, we know the title deed to earth itself, John wept and says he wept and wept. Uh, basically showing, you know, that, that the, I guess the, the feeling that he had that, you know, that, that, creation was going to be judged but there's no one able that open the scroll just to bring on this judgment if if the scroll could not be opened therefore then sin wins because the scroll led to the tribulation time led to the the, the judgment of sin so therefore if it was never opened then therefore the sin would never be judged so therefore sin would never be be brought under control by God himself so you know so that's why one reason that it says here that that, that John wept and wept because of that but then in verse 5, verse 5 says, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and his seven seals. So verse 5, one of the elders, didn't it say which one of the elders? Didn't make any difference which one it is. One of the 24 that's sitting on the thrones and in, in throne room of God said, you know, that, he is telling him or you know, whispering to John, says, do not weep, do not be sorrowful because you know, there is someone that has the power to open, open the scrolls. He says that one that has the power is the line of Judah. It's the root of David and it's worth, worthy because he has triumphed over sin already. In Genesis 49, verse 8 through 10a, he says, Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of, the, of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's club, cub. O Judah, you return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down, like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor will the ruler's staff from between his feet. So basically it's talking about here, and you see many times in the Old, in the Old Testament, in the time where it talks about the, basically the uh, lion of Judah. You know, the lion of Judah is, is signifying Jesus Christ himself. Okay. Also, the same thing with the poison root of David. See that in uh, 1 Samuel, you know, it, several times it, it talks about the root of David, you know, being Jesus Christ. So basically, he is depicting to them at this point in time that, you know, he's talking about Jesus is, is worthy to open these. So Jesus was worthy to break the seals, and if he's worthy to break the seal, he's also worthy to open the scroll. <clears throat> Verse 6 
It says, Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. They says, then he saw a lamb. And this lamb here we know of, it talks about if you, the actual writing of this thing is, is kind of not ambiguous, but it's just it's condensed type deal. In the original writing, it said a little lamb. And a little lamb here signifies this is a small lamb. It is perfect. Basically, it's meek. It is gentle. It is willing to be sacrificed. We know that the lambs, the sacrifices that were made were made from these lambs and one of the sacrifices and had to be a perfect lamb in order to be sacrificed. And this is depicting that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice, you know, that for our sins, you know, type deal, to save us from our, our sins and our iniquities. And Isaiah 53, 7 says, He is oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb into the slaughter. So we know that, you know, Jesus, the first time he came, when he first came in, he came as a lamb. And this is a depiction of a small lamb here is showed showed that, you know, had the depiction of being slain. He had the things that, that Jesus actually in the first coming, at the end of the first coming, he came to be sacrificed for our sins. He's the way that we, well, our sins were paid for. He is the way that we have redemption from sin. He is the way that uh, that we stand, you know, before the throne of God and be, be praised and know that we have every right to be there, okay, because our sins are forgiven and we are called children of God. <clears throat> He says this lamb is standing in the center of the throne. Basically shows the depiction from that is, here's the lamb. We saw the first, one, first coming of Christ was the lamb. Depiction of the slain lamb, which means that he is slain, but he has been resurrected. He is standing again, just like we know that Jesus has been resurrected, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father right now, interceding for us. And he says the same thing here, because he is standing, he is standing in judgment. He is standing prepared to be judged on the second time. The lamb uh, standing here talks about, you know, basically gives us the depiction or the symbolism of the second coming of Christ. We know the first time he came in the first res in the first coming was he came to be a sacrificial lamb, to give up his body, you know, give up his, his place of glory to our, for our redemption. The second coming is to come in judgment. He would come and judge the world, you know, type deal for a thousand years, and then he would come and judge all people as white throne judgment. <clears throat> It says, uh, you know, basically, he is, he is, in his second coming, he is all-knowing, he is all-presence, he is all-power. So, you know, this is the picture we get of the lamb standing in the throne room of God. It said he has seven horns. And Jewish symbol, this is a Jewish symbolism, basically talks about, represents that the authority and the strength to rule are complete power. Uh, the seven horns here shows that Christ has all power given to him by the Father, to do whatever he needs to do, whenever he needs to do it, and how, how he needs to do it, be judge over the earth. <clears throat> he had seven spirits, seven spirits here. It said basically seven spirits, which is the Holy Spirit, which was sent out of the world. The Holy Spirit was sent by God, you know, as Jesus left the earth in resurrection, was sent sent to be on earth to be the helpmate for us, to be the, to be our part in, in our lives where we indwells us through the entire time at, you know, from basically from salvation until we leave the earth. He indwells us and therefore he is part of us. We talked about again as the second coming of Christ comes when the tribulation begins, rapture actually begins. When the rapture begins, then that part of the strainer of the Holy Spirit is taken out. Restrainer means restrainer of evil. He is, uh, he is, he is right now helping hold back Satan and all the things he wants to do you know, to us and for us and, and to us. You know, type deal here on earth during that type of time of tribulation. So that restrainer part of the Holy Spirit is taken out, but the Holy Spirit itself totally is not taken out because we know even in tribulation time there are people saved. So therefore, since there are people saved, the Holy Spirit draws people to God for salvation. So therefore, there's the Holy Spirit is still part of you know the even tribulation times. Okay, um, verse seven. So he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Here it talks about where Jesus came and took the scroll. But Jesus came and took from God the Father and took this out of his hand, basically transferring the judgment of the world, transferring of power and, and everything that needs to be done on earth as for his redemption, for his uh, judgment, sin, the, second, the thousand year reign, the white throne judgment, all this kind of stuff. Uh, 
Jesus takes the scrolls of reigns and righteousness, no longer the intercessor for the church, but it's because the church now has been raptured out. So since his church has been raptured out, now Jesus, inter Jesus does his, his job basically as that of king, and that he is going to rule and judge us and judge the, judge the earth itself. We know that there's three functions of Jesus, three roles that Jesus holds, prophet, priest, priest and king. He, re he held the first role of his in the prophet, and the prophet was basically when he came and he, he walked the earth for 33 years and all and prophesied all those things is going to happen. He was crucified, and after he was crucified and went to heaven, he had actually uh, holds a second robe as, as a priest, and as priest he is sitting at the right hand of God and Father Almighty, interceding for us, interceding for us and you know, and our prayer life and the things and saying that we are we are worthy to be called the children of God. And the third role he has is that as king, and that is that king type deals where he will rule and reign the earth for a thousand years, and then he will rule and reign for eternity after that. Okay. <clears throat> Verse eight talks about it, says, and when he had taken it, taken it, and this is the scroll, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So basically it's saying here that uh, and when he had taken the scroll, when Jesus had taken the scroll, the four four living creatures, now the four living creatures would go back to the first part here, the first uh part of verse four, verse four, chapter four, I'm sorry. The base talks about the uh, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle, signifying the, the parts that represent God himself, or being all-knowing, all-powerful, all all presence, you know, that type of deal. The 24 elders here are the 24 elders that signify, again, in chapter four, is those the saints that have been, been raptured out. They're now sitting on the, 12, on the 24 thrones, Around, around the throne of God type deal and, and worshiping God you know, during this time. It said they fell down and worshiped and that's going to be our major goal in heaven basically is to fall down and worship. Fall down and be what God wants us to be uh, you know, type deal and what we will worship him for eternity once we get there. <clears throat> well, Jesus is worthy of all praise and honor and, and they have uh, that, that the elders had, they, that he was Worthy to be praised and honored in all ways and by all people in heaven. Even to us today, as soon as we get there, we would be spending our time laying our crowns at his feet and praising and honoring and worshiping him. <clears throat> it says each one of them had a heart. Now then uh, in scripture, and especially in Revelation, there's two musical instrument, instruments associated basically with worship in heaven. And that is the harp and the trumpet. Uh, I wrote, read one commentary one was was uh, talking about this guy was talking about says well said so one thing about it didn't say says they have one didn't say he has to play it because he does no has no desire to play a heart you know that type of deal so he is just gonna basically just just have be there so he has the heart you know add in his presence and also that uh, so therefore he said you know the heart hears the trumpet musical instruments worthy worthy of, of worship in heaven during this time. And each of them had a golden bowl full of incense. Incense here, which talks about in this verse, says which are the prayers of the saints. So therefore, if you look back in Psalms 141, verses 1 and 2, it says, O Lord, I call to you, come quickly to me. Hear my voice when I call. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting of my hands be to you in the evening as, as, as the evening sacrifice. So basically, this is depicted throughout Scripture. This bowls that they stand here is the, in the, with incense is the prayers of the saints lifted up to God. <clears throat> these prayers, we know angels can take take these prayers and other parts of them, but it says that angels bring these prayers, you know, to to God and for us. But they are not priests and they are not mediators for us. Okay, but uh, you know, but these are the the prayers of, of the people to God. So Jesus is now in his third role, and this is the, this is the priest, and that's where that's where we are. Well, then I'm going to stop today. We'll pick up in uh, chapter in verse nine and finish the chapter next week or whatever else. It's a little bit shorter than, than normal because I don't have to answer questions or whatever. But uh, but again, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this. Uh, you know, I'm sorry that we couldn't be there and you missed, you know, type deal. But again, we uh, we look forward to being there next week, and hope all of you are, are stay healthy and well. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the things that you do for us. And Father, how you hold us close. Father, we know that in this 
time of trials and troubles as we're in today and as our country's in now, Father, that, that you're still in charge. You're still the great, great power and influence. And Father, you're just the one that, that means everything to us. Father, help us each and every day to walk in your light. Father, help us each and every day to be the spokesman for you here on this earth. Most of all, God, help us to be intercessories in, in our prayer lives for those that need our prayers, to lift them up to you, Father, and bring them before your throne. Thank you, Lord, for each person here today. May they be blessed. May they go out into the world and be a shining light to you. Father, bless keeping guidance with us in Christ's name. Amen. Love you. See you next week.